Hard words, hard questions. Do you think so? Well, you can tell us what you think on 0244-340-437. You can also tweet at us at joy997fm. Go on our Facebook page, joy99.7fm, and leave your message with the hashtag joysms. The man to help us understand all of these issues, um, Mr. Osei Jesse. He is the head of banking supervision division in the Bank of Ghana. We're also here with Dr. Richmond Etiahene, who um, predicted all of this some years back. Gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great. So let's try and begin by familiarizing ourselves with the subject and wh what we are bringing to the table. Mr. Otejas, first of all, tell us um, in brief, in about 10 minutes, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do in the Bank of Ghana. Thank you and good morning to my listeners out there. Thank you. Good morning to my listeners out there. Uh, Osages is my name. Um, I'm the head of banking supervision department. Uh, the supervision of the supervisory department is uh, basically responsible for uh, regulating and supervising of uh, our banks. Uh, banking is one of the most uh, regulated uh, businesses all over the world. Uh, there are laws, there are rules, there are regulations, and uh, the responsibility of my department is to ensure that the laws are enforced, uh, banks and specialized deposit institutions comply uh, with the laws, they comply with the uh, rules, the regulations, in the interest of uh, financial uh, stability and uh, economic development. Okay, but you only took over in October 2017 as head of that division. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so before that, you were. I before that I had worked in uh, the internal audit department of, of, of the bank. And of the bank. Some mm -hmm. other departments. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted us to have that understanding of um, the kind of discussion we are having. And Dr. Tiahini, you have been watching the sector for years. Yeah, tell us a bit about the observations that you have made over the years and how come you have been doing that work in the first place. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for inviting us and thank you for your listeners. I've been observing this over the last seven years and I've done a lot of papers and articles and published a lot of papers on it. I realized between 2009 up to 2017 what I saw was that the non-performing assets were going up. And again, I also realized that in the IMF report 2011, they raised an issue about licensing regime in Ghana. And IMF said that we are over licensing banks. So I took delight to research into it and realized that, seriously, a country with only 29 million people having 34 banks, those days, 36. I thought it was a bit on the higher side. So, so I decided to go further and probe into it. Okay. And I've been probing into it, even the fallout that has come, I wrote it very extensively in 2016 and 2017 that something of this nature was going to happen. So for me, it is not a news to me at all. I'm curious to the indicators you saw that showed you that something like this was going to happen, but I'll come to you after this. Mr. Sejisi, first of all, now that we have gone into, we have dealt with uh, the, the beginning, give us a brief background or an overview of what led to this position that these five banks, or should I say seven banks, have come to, from your perspective. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. From my perspective... Um uh, the issues are, one, governance issues, then uh, two, failure of the banks to comply with uh, regulatory requirements and uh, regulatory norms, then also uh, looking at the the kind of credit administration that the banks are practicing, weak credit uh, uh, administration standards, and uh, also uh, 
insider trading uh, related party transactions uh, and uh, a host of others. Uh, if you read the uh, press statement that uh, was, uh, was released by, by the regulator for each of the five banks, I think the issues were made clear uh, and uh, the issues uh, range from uh, insider trading, uh, uh, high non-performing uh, assets, uh, in the case of uh, Unibank, um, uh, related party transactions which were not done at arm's length, credits that were given out uh, to related parties uh, which were not, which did not follow normal uh, credit procedures, uh, creative accounting, and for some of the other banks, uh, the issues uh, were one, uh, failure to provide the necessary capital at the time they were being uh, licensed, and uh, creative accounting with the objective of overstating the capital of, of these institutions. So you, you realize that uh, these banks uh, basically failed to comply with regulatory requirements, uh, governance issues, internal dealing, uh, failure to comply with Bank of Ghana directive, and a host of others. And these put together uh, is what has resulted in the current situation in which we find ourselves. Mm. Okay. Um, so what we'll be doing is that we'll be looking at this issue from the perspective of your office and what, you know, the various things that happened and it did, did not happen. Uh, Doc, so you just heard Mr. Osage see they're giving us from where he sits what led to all of this. Some of the issues have been raised already. Um, for instance, what you said about governance and failure to abide by the norms that the regulator has given them, given them and credit administration, insider trading, as you decided to call it, and all of that. Uh, is there anything that we haven't covered in that overview? Yeah, I think there are a lot that has not been covered. In as much as we talk about failure in corporate governance, there also have been a, regu a regulatory failure and regulatory infractions. infractions. Um, regulatory infractions means that things were not done properly by the regulator, the Bank of Ghana. I mean, a typical one is that we say that suspicious capital or suspicious or non-existent capital I thought the there must be a procedure for verification and the source of funding. At least capital must come. If it is a global capital, it comes with a global deposit receipt to indicate that these funds are coming there. So I thought that in as much as we are talking about corporate governance failure, there is also regulatory failures. Regulatory failures. And I have been talking a lot about it. There are regulatory forbearances, poor enforcement, you need to be very tough on your enforcing. And you don't delay actions that you should have taken a year ago. The more you delay, the more the risk become high. How was this action delayed, what we heard last week? Well, it has delayed because, as I told you, this system does not start yesterday. It started, some started as far back as 2013. Some started as far back as 2013. You remember in 2015, the IMF came to do asset quality review only to tell us. The question that I ask myself, don't we have people here who are supposed to have seen it? Because reports are sent. We have a lot of BSD reports. I think it's well over 60. And all these things come out with certain things. And when we, these things were, came to us, what did we do as a regulator? So that's why I call the regulatory forbearances. And when you saw it, there is a need for us to have enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. Apply the word to the letter. If people started doing insider uh, share-related lending, the law allows you to stop them. It allows the law, both the former Banking Act and the current one, gives right. every, the power to, to stop them. But if people close their eyes on it and thought nothing was happening, the consequences is the, the support we are talking about, 5.7 billion, in addition to the 2.2 billion, and which is about 5% of the GDP. 
Dr. Tiani, in simple terms, what specifically should the bank have done and at what time? Well, examination, monitoring, supervision, return sender, these figures will come. You feel that these issues that the bank were facing would have been spotted by the bank? You, exactly. When? How far back? Some would have been far back as 2013 and 2014. And, at what, and what specific steps do you expect, did you expect at the time? I expect the regulator to be tough and enforce it to the word. Okay. I'll come to the argument of the new, this being a new administration in a moment. But, Mr. Osegesi, do you agree that the state that you came to meet the banks in is something that's begun years back and should have been spotted by the bank? Uh, we have always said that uh, we, we've had uh, some challenges in time past um, with regards to monitoring, with regards to regulating this bank, supervising these banks. And uh, we are not trying to make excuses that, uh, or rationalize or justify what has happened. Um, regulators have to be tough and, and enforce the law strictly and ensure that the banks uh, comply. Uh, what we keep saying is that uh, we should be happy that uh, we have not swept these issues under the carpet. Uh, the uh, current uh, management and the board of the bank uh, have seen that uh, if the current interventions that we, we have made, if they were not done, uh, things would have uh, been worse. Uh, it's a very difficult decision that uh, we have taken uh, and I think that we should uh, be forward-looking that in the sense that uh, if you have a central bank or a regulator who has been transparent and has come out to take such a decision, uh, liquidating five banks is, is not an easy decision. Mm. Uh, I think that this, this is a pointer of the direction that the regulator wants to go going, 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 going forward. Uh, we are not happy uh, about the current situation in which we find ourselves, but uh, you can be sure and uh, that going forward, it's, it's not going to be uh, business as usual. Uh, we're going to enforce the rules, we're going to enforce the law, and the period of forbearance is gone. That is the position of the central bank. So you agree that there was forbearance? Thus, I think we have come out to say that we had a few challenges in time past. Uh, my senior mentioned about uh, the capital issue. Uh, we have documented procedures uh, that are uh, used to verify capital uh, and the essence. And just to, to be clear, you are referring to the case of those two banks who is being stated that they presented under false pretense that the capital that they have that is beige and um, sovereign. Yeah, what I'm saying is that. Uh, we have documented procedures for verifying capital to ensure that uh, we determine the source of the capital, the amount involved, and those who are bringing the money. We do due diligence and also ensure that not just that they brought in the capital, but the capital must also stay after it's been brought in. Uh, and uh, as already indicated, we, have, we had some challenges in the uh, application of these procedures in time past. Uh, we are not making excuses. But you can be, sh sh you, you can count on the current management of the central bank that going forward, uh, these procedures will be fully complied with, and uh, the period where people could do whatever they want to do or they wanted to do and uh, got away with it, that period is gone. Uh, people, including myself, uh, everybody is going to be held responsible for his or her action in the bank, and this is the signal that the current management has sent out, and you can trust that it, it will be done. In the spirit of holding people responsible, would it not be necessary to hold officials who superintendent over these challenges, um, these lack of enforcement, this forbearance, would it not be necessary to hold them responsible? Um, I, I think that you must understand the, 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 the rule of, of, of the uh, regulator and the and for that matter, the central bank. Uh, we, we, I keep saying that we have done our work. We have come out the report. The public has been informed. Uh, we have appropriate state agencies whose responsibilities 
involve the uh, taking up of, of whatever reports that have been filed and ensure that uh, uh, whoever uh, was involved, uh, the corporate uh, brought to book. It is not the responsibility of the central bank to, 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 to prosecute people, and we have said this over and over and over. Uh, I believe that when it comes to collaboration, the central bank will be available to collaborate with the appropriate state agencies for the necessary action to be taken. Um, in fact, uh, somebody would really have to be found to be found to have uh, acted in, in a criminal manner for the person to be prosecuted. It is not the responsibility of the central bank to prosecute people, but yeah. we are prepared to collaborate. Yeah, yeah, we we understand that fully. I was asking actually about the officials of the central bank who superintendent of, over this period of forbearance that we did because that has cost us about eight billion. Ghana cities. At least, are there no administrative sanctions that the Bank of Ghana itself can apply to these persons because of the position that we are in now? You see, we, 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 we must know that, uh, and want to inform you or tell my listeners that the Central Bank has a uh, code of conduct, we have code of ethics, and these are known, the contents are known to members of staff. And you can be sure uh, that at the appropriate time, Anybody who is found to have uh, compromised, the appropriate sanctions will be applied. Yeah. So are you stating categorically that the Bank of Ghana is looking into this to sanction the persons who were found to have been culpable in any way? What I'm saying is that uh, if it comes out that somebody compromised, the appropriate sanctions will be applied. Because I have told you over and over that that's a report. We have done the report. And uh, the period in which uh, these things uh, occurred are clearly defined. Are you getting it? And uh, uh, it was uh, these things occurred under the administration of uh, 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 some people. And once the people have been identified and there's the need, they are found culpable by the law. Uh, it, I think it is important. Mm -hmm. that, and they are found culpable by the law. Uh, the appropriate sanctions will be, will be, will be applied. That's fine. Um, so who gave these banks that have licensing issues, who gave them the last set or should I say the initial licenses and what due diligence was done? Who are the officials? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, so f uh, once we can define the period in which the licenses were given, I think we can clearly identify the people who gave these licenses. And I'm, I'm happy you have come out to ask uh, the, f the, the, the provisional and the final. You see, somebody puts in an application for a banking license and you would have to do your due diligence up to a point in time. And once you are satisfied that uh, a set of documentation submitted to the bank have been verified and they've been found to be authentic and accurate, then what you do is that you give uh, the person a provisional license. Then provisional means there are some other uh, compliance issues that would have to be met. Then, once the person comes to, uh, once the person goes ahead to meet the other outstanding requirements, then you give the person the final um, license. But you see, at that point in time, when you gave the provisional license, you would have verified the capital, you would have done some other verifications, and you gave the provisional Which license. Which department specifically? Yeah. Uh, it is done by the Banking Supervision Department. So your department? Yeah, my department. Then uh, the, the, the time comes and you issue the person with the final license. Then because you want to be sure that the capital that the person brought in uh, stayed in the business, right, and it did not go out of the business, six months after that or a period after that, you go back to do another examination. You go on site to do another examination. And the examination will involve the verification of the capital that the person brought. So at this point in time, when issues come up, when you're doing the on-site verification after you've issued the final license, then you begin to ask questions. Why is the capital that bro was brought in? Then if you find that the capital that was brought in did not stay in the business, then the necessary action would have to be taken. Is that what you found after those six months? Yeah, we did special investigations. We did. We vis we went on site to look at their books, their records, and the kind of issues that we have stated in the press release were found. That's. I just want to be clear. There's, so there's a provisional license given that was 2016. 
There was a final license given, that is 2017. There's an on-site examination done six months after the final license is given. That is when we realize there's a problem. Yeah. And you see, it's not like you even wait for the on-site examination to be done. Supervision is an ongoing process. Like Just as my senior mentioned, Mr. Dr. Tuahin mentioned, they will start submitting returns on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, and you will be doing trend analysis of the returns that are coming in. It is possible that in doing your trend analysis, in reviewing the uh, returns that came in, you may realize that uh, the figures that you are getting are not in uh, alignment with your expectations. Then the question is, what should I do? You need to go on site. You have to ask some more questions. Once so we could have done an on site examination even before the six months elapsed. Normally, for, 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 for a new bank, you agree with me that the bank wouldn't have done a lot of uh, transactions. That is why I'm saying that, that we have the off site surveillance system. You don't necessarily have to go on site. The off site surveillance system complements the on site system. So once you are looking at the data, the returns, the prudential returns that are submitted to you, anytime you realize that the figures that are coming in are not in agreement with your expectations, you can move on site. Since you took over, I mean, we've already said that there was some forbearance and all that, but since you took over, I'm sure you've had the opportunity to look back at some of these reports you were given and all of that. Are you satisfied with the work that was done by your predecessors? Let, 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 let me say that uh, before the collapse of uh, these five banks, Mr. Tui, Dr. Tui Ahin indicated we had 34 banks. And so far, I think seven have gone down, right? Uh, two last year and uh, five this year. And all these banks uh, were licensed uh, by the central bank with input from the banking supervision department. Much as I, we are not happy about the, the seven banks that have gone down, it's like a doctor who has uh, lost a patient. That's how we feel. Uh, that alone would not be enough ground uh, to say that uh, everybody who worked in the banking supervision department before these events, before these casualties, did not do his or her work well. We regret the current situation, but that will not be... We, we, we would have wished for a situation where no bank uh, went down. But looking at the jobs, uh, the work that has been, in, has been done in time past vis-a-vis -vis what the current situation, I think some good work was done in time past, even though we've had okay. these challenges. Okay, specifically, um, was the giving of this provisional license, do you think it was based on sound judgment? Uh, I, I think I, ha I have said that um, we, we could have been more thorough in, in the work that we did in time past. Maybe we could have gone strictly by the procedures or even gone beyond the procedures in place to mitigate the kind of risk that uh, has crystallized as we speak. Uh, that is why we have taken steps to improve the... Uh, regulatory framework we have as we speak. And by regulatory framework, I'm talking about licensing, on-site, off-site, and all the kind of uh, processes and procedures we have in place in supervising these banks just to improve on uh, the situation we had in time past. Okay, so, so what does that mean we could have been more thorough? What did we not do? Uh, I've told you that there were... There, there, there were uh, Compliance issues, uh, as far as the work we, 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 we've been doing is concerned, uh, maybe we were not thorough. Uh, there were, as indicated, forbearance here and there. Uh, that is what has brought us uh, thus far. But I think if you look at the, uh, uh, the guidances that we have issued and uh, the kind of soft structures, let me put it that way, that we are trying to put in place, that should tell you the direction that we want to go. And for me, I think we need the support of all stakeholders yeah. uh, in this business that we are doing for us to get to wherever we want to go. You see, Mr. Osage, see, it may seem like I'm focusing on a certain section of this discussion, and we are trying to focus on what has happened. But for my experience as journalists, what you've noticed is that Ghanaians have no problem setting out guidelines. 
and putting rules. The problem we have is following them. You see, so this morning, if I may, this morning we are trying to diagnose exactly what went wrong so that those of us who are outside the sector know what to ask next time round. You see, what I have said over and over that we have uh, various processes that we go through. Yeah. And one of them is licensing of commercial uh, So what specifically banks. went wrong? Where specifically did we fail in licensing beige construction and sovereign? Yeah, it's, it, I've said that it's about verification of capital. So we did not verify the capital? It was verified, but maybe we were not thorough. And we did not get to the logical conclusion of the process. It's not like the, the capital came in and nobody verified. I've told you over and over that there were omissions, there were commissions here and there. Are you getting it? With regards to verification of we, the capital. It's those omissions that we want to know. Pardon me? It's those omissions that we want to know. For instance, how did it come that at the Bank of Ghana officials looked at the books of beige and came to the conclusion that these guys have enough capital to start a bank? I think the most important thing for me is, for, is, is the admission that there were omissions and commissions here and there and steps have been taken to address the issue. That, for me, is what we should be, that should give us some comfort. Because, um, fine, there should be transparency, but how is that going to help? The most important thing is the steps that have been taken to address the issue. And our commitment, the central bank's commitment, in ensuring that we go strictly by the law, the regulations, and the processes that have been put in place. For me, that is the most important thing. We are not saying that nothing went wrong. That is not what we are saying. And I think the management of the bank has said this thing this over and over, several times, that there were instances of forbearance and failure to comply or enforce the rules. I get it. And going forward... I have, I have sorry, I have one of my listeners asking me um, that you explain forbearance. So when you are... When you're done with this summit, please, uh, just el for a layman's expression of what forbearance is. Okay. Uh, forbearance, uh, for me, what it means is that either you did not take the appropriate action or you delayed in taking the appropriate action. That is what is forbearance. Yeah. Even if you took the appropriate action and there was delay, and you know that control delay, any time that there was a delay in implementing a control, what it means is that the exposure that could come out of the delay increases. So who delayed? I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying that there was a delay. What I'm saying is that there was omission, there was commission. It could be that no action was taken or there was a delay in taking the action. Which, no, which was it? Was it that there was no action or there was a delay? Or it was both? It could be both. No, um, um, okay, let me take Beige Bank. Yeah. What happened with Beige Bank? Was, it, was there a delay in verifying it them? Was it that some verification processes were not done? What exactly? That's what we are trying to find out this morning. What exactly happened? If, 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 you, if you've read the, the press statement that was issued by the central bank, I think it speaks for itself in, in the case of Beige. In the case of Beige, the, the statement indicated that banking license was acquired on the basis of false pretenses. And I think it speaks for itself. It's clear. Well, when you say, yeah. on, the, when, when you say on the basis of false pretense, yeah. we have come from there and this morning we have established that that false pretense was successful because of possible forbearance. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that forbearance is a big word. What happened in there? So you, see, you, see, you see, forbearance, I have explained forbearance to you that forbearance could mean Two things, failure to take action or delay in taking action. In the case of Beige, you agree with me that Beige has been in business for some time now. Maybe just after the license was issued, are you getting it? Just after the license was issued, and like you said, we normally do it six months after. Just after the license was issued, an on-site examination could have been done. But you see, at the end of the day, what I am saying we should focus on is the way forward. These issues, these issues have been brought up and it is now in the public domain in the interest of transparency. And the central bank has indicated that going forward, this is the way we're going to go. There, will no, there, will, there, there wouldn't be forbearance. People will be held accountable for what they do. And if you look at the guidances that we have issued within this short period, corporate governance and all the others, 
These things put together should tell all stakeholders that the period of forbearance, the pe period where people could do whatever they wanted to do and get away, and they got away with those things, those periods or those periods are gone. Mm. Are you getting it? And everybody is going to be held accountable for what he or she does in the bank. And management has come out to say this to the general public. And for me, that should give us some kind of comfort for the central bank to have come out to take such a decision. It wasn't an easy decision to be taken because it has implications for the taxpayer. But management is saying that this is the best way forward. And everybody in the bank is aware of what is happening now. And people will be held accountable. That is the position of the central bank. You referred to Beige Bank and what happened with them. And... Um, that statement that was that except of the governor's statement says here, yeah, I have it here. It says Beige Bank and Construction Bank were each granted provisional licenses in 2016 and launched in 2017. Subsequent investigations conducted by the Bank of Ghana revealed that similar to the case of Sovereign Bank, both banks obtained their banking licenses under false pretenses through the use of suspicious and non existent capital, which has resulted in a situation where their reported capital is inaccessible to them for their operations. A final question on this before I move on. Your predecessor, Raymond Amanfo, did they pull the wool over his eyes? I'm not in a position to tell. I'm not in a position to tell. Why not? Don't you have the documents that show what he saw? I'm not in a position to tell because uh, uh, I think uh, this, this, this is a question that I think should be uh, should, should, should be put to uh, himself. Uh, I'm not in a position to speak for Mr. No, but you are the current head of the banking supervision. And that is why I'm telling you that things were not done properly. But as to... By who? As, as, Was as it to, Mr. As, as, as to his involvement, I'm not in a position to tell. So who is being held responsible for this? We are all in this country, and I think we know what has gone on. And we've read in the papers, we've read in the dailies. And... Uh, we know that something is being done. Are you getting it? And within the central bank, who is being held responsible? Within the central bank, yeah. who is being held responsible? Yeah. I have I have told you that this thing, this issue, this uh, matter that we are talking about now uh, occurred uh, during a period of time. Yeah, we know. I, I, are you getting we it? We know. Uh, yeah. And for that matter, I I I. If you ask me, I think. Uh, it is for the law enforcement agencies to, to, to take up the matter and collaborate with the central bank. Are, are you getting Because uh, there should be rule of law. You need to take people through due process to be able to sanction them. You, you, you get it. Uh, that is why I keep saying that for me, uh, another state agency, the law enforcement agencies, would have to be seen to be doing their work. The central bank, as far as I'm concerned, has done its work. We could have swept this matter under the carpet, right? In doing your work, have you referred any official of the bank or any former official of the bank to any law enforcement agency? I guess you, you've been reading the papers. And as a media house, you know what is going on. And you know better than I do, right? What, what am I supposed to know? You know what is going on in, 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 in the country? Please answer the yeah, question. Has the bank referred any official, current or former of the bank, to any law enforcement agency? If 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 we are aware that uh, Yuko has invited some people, certainly that couldn't have been done without uh, a report. That's why I'm saying that you are in this country. You are you work with the media, and you know what is going on. I think you even know better than I do. Because you bring the news I out. Know, yeah, I you, you, I yeah, you, 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 yeah, you know better than I do. Sausages, yeah, and now I know better than you. Yeah, you know, because you... you, As, you, you have, yeah. have these officials, have these officials um, who have been invited by Yoko, any of them... Well, so now you person. admit that some people have been invited. You are telling, you just told me. You, you, so I am asking, you just told me that Yoko has invited... And you know, persons. aren't you aware? I am asking... Please answer the question. The question is that has the bank has any Bank of Ghana official? Are they are there any Bank of, of Ghana officials in there? Those who have been invited by Yoko. Those who have been invited by, by Yoko. Yoko. Are there any Bank of Ghana officials in there, present or former? I, I'm not able to speak to this. I'm not able to speak to this because if anybody has been invited, I wouldn't know. It's, it's, it's another department that will know. 
if anybody has been invited, I wouldn't know. But what I'm saying is that, you know, people have been invited by Yoko. And that alone should tell you that there's that kind of collaboration. As to who has been invited and who has not been invited, it is not for me to speak I'm not to. asking for names. At least give me Bank of Ghana officials. Have Bank of Ghana officials been invited? What I can say to you is that there are procedures in dealing with the law enforcement agencies when it comes to inviting public officials, right? They would have to follow procedures. And such those letters that come to the bank in respect of invitation of public officials would not, wouldn't have come to me. You would need to liaise with the appropriate department. You cannot just come to banking supervision and hand over a letter to me that you are inviting a staff member of mine. It is not done that way. You would have to go through procedures. Right. That is why I'm telling you that I'm not in a position to speak to that issue because it doesn't fall under the ambit of my department. I wouldn't know. But as a head, uh, the head of a department in the bank, you're not aware that some persons have been, these persons of these persons have been invited to um, Yoko? I'm not in a position to speak to that. Maybe uh, the appropriate department will be in a position to speak to that. But I'm saying that you are aware that people have been invited. Right. So what makes you think that nothing is being done? I'm, I'm, I've not said anything like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've not said anything. I was just asking for some specifics. Okay. Well, it's right. 24 minutes to the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy. 99.7 FM. I am Daniel Dazi. I'm here with Osei Jesse. He's the head of banking supervision at the Bank of Ghana. I'm also here with Dr. Richmond Itiahene. Um, Dr. Itiahene, I'll come back to you mm. for your thoughts on what we've heard so far. You're satisfied with the action that has been taken by the bank? Well, I think we could, we could do better. I heard that administrative uh, procedures are being done with. And I believe that if a thorough investigation, as Osei is saying, is done and people are found culpable, even within Bank of Ghana, I strongly believe to serve as a deterrent. People who are found culpable, whether you were the former deputy governor, whether you were the, uh, the governor, they all have to appear before the relevant committees. If the findings came out that they've been found culpable, I think nobody should be exempted from this because the cost of it is huge. I can imagine five, eight billion cities, about 4% of the GDP, I believe that anybody, anybody, nobody is above the law. If what Osei is saying, the investigation come out that some people condone and connive by issuing licenses to non-existent capital, they must face the bu they must face the bullet. These things has been done in other jurisdiction. Let me quote you in Nigeria. In Nigeria, people went to prison. Why do we want to? Go on like this. And what hurts me, and I'm just, I just, I've just i written a lot about it. We were in this country. One person collapsed two state bank, only to be given a license to rent a savings and loans. After demise of two bank for housing and cooperative, he got a license the next two months running. So I am very happy about what they are doing, but they must do more. They must do more. They must do more. What more? What more must recommend they Recommend if they find out that anybody was, as he's saying, the investigation, internal procedure finds out there were breaches here and there. I think they must all be referred to the appropriate agencies where prosecution will have to be done. Other than that, this $8 billion has gone into the drain. Mm. Well, so, Mr. Mr. Sergei, what assurance, can you, what assurance can you give persons like... Dr. Tiahene, that this eight billion is not going down the drain. Um, I, I, we, we, eight billion certainly is a lot of money, and and uh, it's a uh, fiscal cost that uh, is being borne by the the, 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 the tax the taxpayer. Um, and uh, I would want to uh, assure. Uh, uh, all depositors uh, and stakeholders, which includes uh, Mr. 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 Etuya, uh, that uh, he should just look at uh, within this short period what what the 
uh, management of the bank uh, has, 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 has done. Okay. Um, and uh, that should tell Mr. Tuya and all stakeholders that the, about the direction that we, we, we want to go uh, for a decision to be made mm. that uh, five banks are going to be liquidated knowing the social implications yeah. and, and, and the uh, financial implications. I, I see Dr. Tia Hini nodding yeah, there it's, 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 it's not an easy decision. And for management to have taken this decision should tell us that uh, management has the heart of this mm. economy, has the, the, this economy at its heart, and uh, will not expose uh, the bank to $8 billion and go ahead and do the wrong things. Right. right, yeah. Right. That 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 for me uh, should give us some kind of comfort. And looking at the various directives that uh, have come out and the guidances that have come out uh, on corporate governance, which will uh, regulate or uh, uh, try to streamline and make sure that people who are in charge of banks, board of directors, shareholders, and and key management staff uh, are up to the task. Right, okay, and banks are properly uh, 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 governed, and also looking at um, fit and proper doc- directive which we have issued uh, to ensure that people who are in charge of banks are fit and they are really proper to be there. Uh, getting a banking license is a privilege, and when we talk about people who are fit, we are not just talking about the directors and, and the key management staff. Uh, banking business is a sensitive one, and shareholders who are uh, given uh, licenses to operate banks must be seen to be fit mm. and proper. Okay. Because mm. besides the capital that they put in, they are going to collect people's deposits. And we must get assurance that these are people who will take very good care of of, of depositors' funds and they okay. will not mobilize deposits and, and, and apply the deposits to jeopardize the interest yeah. of uh, 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 depositors. So right. all these things put together should give Mr. Etuya that comfort. Dr. Etuya. Yeah, yeah. Doc, sorry, sorry. Dr. Etuya, that comfort that uh, going forward is not going to be business as usual. Okay. Well, let me... Doc let me, doesn't mind. Doc, I know you have a comment to <laughs> no. make. I would ask that uh, you, you give me a boon here, please. Um, let's go for these messages and come back. I'll give you your, your comments. Yeah. And then I'd like a, a detailed definition of what this fit and proper means. So from going forward, if I want to have a bank... What kind of person do I have to be? Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. 18 minutes to the top of the hour. Send in your comments and your questions, if you have any, on 0244-340-437. At Joy997FM is our Twitter handle. Joy99.7FM is our our Facebook page. Use the hashtag JoySMS. Stay with us. What's your thing? Corporate guy, shirt and tie, heels and scarves? You got to meet those KPIs, buddy. Appraisal is coming up soon. Pressure! But as we say, because we go die, we no go sleep. What's your thing? Friday night out with the buddies or the ladies. Bonding over drinks and gossips. Find you at Kiki B's or Kona. Crazy artists grinding, blasting through the speakers. Dreaded Monday, couple of days away, no fears. Work hard, play hard. Hashtag journey to the top. Let's do your thing. Stand Big Bang. Moving forward. How are you doing, my brother? I'm having problems as an architect, getting quality security products on the market. Asa Abloh is your one-stop shop for your needs. They have strong padlocks with double locking systems. They also have security doors, hydraulic door closures, hinges, and mechanical locks, pull handles for glass, wooden, and aluminum doors. Also in stock are the Yale Smart Home Alarm System. They have access control for offices, residents, and schools, hotel electronic locks, and safes. You can find Asa Abloy in Accra, adjacent MTN office on the 11th lane, Osu, Takrade, Kumase, Tamale. You can reach Asa Abloy on 0302 778 029 or 050 133 9085 for further details. Ready? Of course I'm ready. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? A party? A trip? A game? A challenge? I'm ready for you. Well, that's what I thought before I joined the Woodin Ready to Whatever Challenge. They asked me to perform before a crowd. Man, without a script. I wasn't ready at all for this one. Get ready to live an amazing experience. Buy any ready to wear from the Woodin New Generation Collection and join the challenge. Terms and conditions apply. Woodin, le créateur.
The Rusa Bank in town, solid and strong, giving you the service you desire. It's commerce, savings, and loans. We give you financial security you deserve through our Susu account, church account, fixed account, kitty account, and many more. Our duty loan for churches, asset finance, federal loans, and others have interest rates that are perfect for any pocket. At commerce, savings, and loans, we make life convenient for you. Make payments on all mobile networks, pay for DSC. TV, mobile money, TV license, and many others. Call us on 0302-767-827 or 667-783. Commerce Savings and Loan. We offer you a relationship beyond. Want to buy airtime for that special person? Do you need that app that works without internet? Worry no more. Moola Lite is here. You can buy airtime to any network and pay bills using any mobile money wallet. What's more, earn money by referring new users to buy airtime. Download the Moola Lite app from Google Play Store today or simply dial star 234 hash to use Moola Lights. It's time to experience something different, unexpected, and definitely beyond banking. It's a new era at GCB Bank, Ghana's most welcoming bank, where we offer you a world of financial security, flexibility, and convenience. We swiftly serve you with over 180 branches and 300 ATMs and provide e-banking solutions that make it possible for you to bank anywhere, anytime. When you need a personal loan, sooner is better than later, so we give it to you in 24 hours to make sure the experience is always memorable. At GCB, your opportunities are limitless and we keep you smiling at all times. We're bigger and better, ready to take you beyond banking. GCB Bank, your bank for life. There are different kinds of laughter. The ones that sound like a machine gun. <laughs> The ones that sound like a malfunctioning microphone. <laughs> the ones that sound like an engine with heart attack. <laughs> the ones that sound like hot banku is stuck in the throat. <laughs> the ones that sound like they are trying to hold it in. <laughs> the ones that sound like they have 30 billion in their account. <laughs> the ones that start laughing in bass, then switch to tenor, alto, and end in soprano. <laughs> Join the left cousin fiesta with the best of African comedians at Glow Laughter Fest at Fantasy Dome Pavilion F. Trade First Center across. On 12th of August and 9th of September, featuring Basket Mouth, Bovi, Salvador, Senator, Dan the Humorous, Chemical, Shay Law, Godons, Jacinta, DKB, and Foster Romanus. To gain entry, just dial star 5301 hash and use 20 Ghana CDs on voice or 30 Ghana CDs on voice and data within 30 days. The first 5,000 entries will get guaranteed front row seats and personally signed autographs from your favorite stars. Glow Love the Fest. Don't miss out. The Grandmasters of Data. Glow Ghana. It's a new day. Are you ready? So my girls and I are finally going on our long-awaited trip. Everyone is excited, but I'm even more excited because my Cowbank mobile app is the real deal. If it's about transferring funds, I'm sorted. If it's about paying my bills, why are sorted? But me changing my pin, locking my card, at all airtime, set a standing order, and locate the nearest Cowbank branch or ATM anywhere I find myself. Into trip way dear, chilling in Kwan. I don't have to worry while I'm away because my Callback mobile app has me. Do more with your mobile phone or tablet. Think it forward, you're smart. Now get it trendy. Download the Callback mobile app on free Google Play Store and our app store, Sisiya. And enjoy convenient banking. We'll be bia will be anytime. Callback. Forward together. Callback. Forward together. The other day, as I was in my kitchen preparing my special jollof made with lily rice for my family, I heard a knock at the door. It was my mechanic. Instead of calling me to pick my car, he bought it himself. I said, Cho, he said, Elfo. I said, Take the car back. I will come and pick it myself. I said, Turn off the fire from under the lily jollof. There was another knock at the door. He was my neighbor. I said, Neighbor, neighbor. He said, Elfo, my dog has jammed your wall again, oh. I said, don't be silly. You don't have a dog. My wife and kids came home, and we saw that he enjoyed. So, it was my pastor. He said, bless you. I said, bless you too. He said, did he come to church on Saturday? I said, I chose, but uh, why are you coming to tell me this on Wednesday? 
Having to fend off visitors at mealtimes because of Lele's tasty aromatic rice? Celebrate every mealtime by sharing with friends and family near or far. Lele, tasty food, happy family. Ato, this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Welcome to Anchmans University College of Health Sciences, the newest health university college here in Ghana, poised to add in value to the pharmaceutical industry in the country. Anchmans was set up to meet the high demand for research and in-depth knowledge for pharmacy. We are accredited by the National Accreditation Board, affiliated with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Students have the unique opportunity to enhance on training with the Antwans University Hospital and the Antwans Pharmaceutical and Research Center. School start in September 2018. Call us on 050-908-6631 or 050-908-6651. Enroll now. You can locate us at Okwegono of the Spintash Road, Accra. Antwans University College of Health Sciences your preferred choice for pharmaceutical and allied health training. Admission, admission. The Catholic Institute of Business and Technology, CIBT, a private Christian university, is calling on all who wish to study degree programs such as information technology, accounting, public administration, marketing, banking, and human resource management, religion studies, and church administration. To apply now, CIBT is fully accredited and affiliated to the University of Ghana and KNUSD. Forms can be purchased at all EMS sections of Ghana post offices. Locate us at our campus, adjacent the Nat Hall. Please contact 0575-033-547. Coffee in your cup. Enjoy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. Ten minutes to the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. Thanks for staying with us. We've been talking to Mr. Osage, the head of banking supervision division at the Bank of Ghana. And Dr. Richmond Tiahene is also here. I just like to describe him as the man who saw it all coming. Somewhere way back in 2013. So, so far we've been going through exactly what happened that led to the collapse of these five banks. Mr. Sage has still ended by saying some of the changes that have been made to the guidelines when it comes to setting up banks in Ghana. We'll be going a bit more into detail in some of those things and also some of the things that the bank itself has done to its internal structures to ensure that it's better placed and more positioned to spot some of these things that went wrong and make sure that um, they do not happen again, basically. Your comments are welcome, 0244-340-437 and also on at Joy997FM on Twitter, hashtag JoySMS, also on Facebook, Joy99.7FM. But have you ever been to China? Would you like to go if I were footing the bill, providing accommodation, food and transport? That's something you want? Really? What's your thing? Well, guess what? I, Daniel Dazzy, have the privilege of taking three children to China from August 26 to September 2, 2018, thanks to Stambik and Tianchen Cultural Development Corporation. It's that easy. All you need to do is tell me what your thing is. What are your dreams? What do you aspire to be? What do you hope for? Anything that's your thing. This is how. Write or record a video or voice note um, to us and tell us what your thing is. This contest is for children between the ages of 12 and 17. Deadline for submission is Tuesday, August 7. That is tomorrow. So send your written essay of not, of not more than 100 words to Stambik Bank Ghana Marketing Support Link at mail.standardbank.com That is Stambik Bank Ghana Marketing Support Link That is all one word at mail.standardbank.com or take it to any Stambik Bank branch nationwide. Send your five minutes video or voice recording to WhatsApp number 020 50554. 020 50 Parents and guardians, let's keep your words busy this summer break. What's your thing? Do your thing. Stambik Bank, this is another way we move you forward. Now, Entrance University of 
uh, University College of Health Sciences is the first private university to offer the Doctor of Pharmacy degree in the West African sub-region. We provide great opportunities for training in the pharmaceutical field. Our students will have a hands-on pharmaceutical manufacturing pr practice and will equally have an opportunity to do their clinical at Entrance University Hospital. Admission is for SSCE or WASI with passes with at least grade 6 in three core subjects, English, Mathematics and Integrated Science and three electives, Biology, biology, I should say, chemistry and either physics or elective maths and a pass in social studies. Other qualifications include international baccalaureate, IGCSC, GCE or advanced level, GCE level. Foreign applicants must submit copies of all results and must have a science background. Entrance University College of Health Sciences is accredited by National Accreditation Board and is affiliated to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology KNUST. Location is number 16 Opoigono of the Spintex Road. Telephone is 050-908-6631 or 050-908-6651 or 026-870-2763. Website is euchs.edu.gh. We always talk about pensions and life after pension, but we hardly take the decision to plan properly. Have you made any plan towards it? Let me introduce you to an easy and flexible pension plan. It's all made easy and simple with United Pension Trustees. Sign up to my own pension with United Pension Trustees and gain access to higher interest with additional benefits such as a savings account and flexible contributions. Simply go to your MTN mobile money menu by dialing star 170 hash. Select option 9 for pensions and insurance, then option 1. For my own pension then you select option one enroll and follow the prompts make daily weekly and monthly contributions to build your wealth with united pension trustees for further inquiries call our customer service center on 0242-436-880 or 0302-208042 my own pension pension pa 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 So let me begin um, this section of the conversation. I promised Dr. Tia Hene I'll come to you for your comment before I go on. Doc, you wanted to make a comment before we went on the break. You want to give us that? Thank now? you very much. I think for what I heard from Mr. Osegesi and what I have also read, I think we need to commend people for the new directives that are coming in. Because over, we've been in this system for, God knows, I've been in the system for about 40 years before I retired. And I haven't seen such directives, straight directives, especially with the corporate governance. We as a nation or as the sector has not been very serious about corporate governance in Ghana. So I was very happy when I saw the governor came out with the directives in 2018, in March. Very good. And also saw the fit and proper test. You know, the fit and proper person is very, very key if we want to go forward. Because not everybody deserves to have a license. Not everybody deserves to be an owner of a bank or be a board member. And I think it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. And again, the capital requirement directives issued. The financial holding, all those things that came in. I think it's a step in the right direction. Although it's, 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 not, it's too late, but it's not too late. Okay. For way forward, I think it's good. Because in other jurisdictions, these things have been done, like in Nigeria. It's been done since 20, some 2006, 2014. But I just want to commend them for being very, at least in our terms, very proactive so that we can stop. There have been managing directors who have been, and chairman managing directors who have been 26 years. It's only in this jurisdiction. Mm. <laughs> it is only in this jurisdiction. So in Nigeria, for instance, they've asked that you can't be an MD for more than 10 years. No, yes, 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 straight away. Even if you set it up, you have Doc, to... Doc, what does that achieve? It achieves that, you see, we should create succession, good succession plan. And the mere fact that you set up a bank, or the mere fact that you become an MD, it doesn't, you don't, it doesn't become a permanent part of your life. And in other jurisdictions, like in, in even UK, it's there. So I think... Although it came in after this crisis, I think it's good. And we should actually ensure, my word I want to tell you, is about enforcement. 
you can have fantastic directives, but if people do not enforce it to the letter, or if we politicize it, I mean, we're going to talk about shell uh, corporate governance. The way our ownership structure is, it always leads to what we are seeing. We have controlling shareholders who actually manipulate the board. So I think what governor is set up to do, if we all agree and let it work, at least for the next 10, 15 years, we will possibly not be experiencing this. Okay. Because after the financial crisis, new directives have come in Europe, UK, okay. in America. New directives. So we have to learn and begin to go forward. And I believe my only caution is that Bank of Ghana should enforce it to the letter. Okay. Um, the man who will be doing the enforcement is here. So we'll get that assurance from him. But let's take the joy business minute and then we'll come to Mr. Osage for what I said earlier about the definition of fit and proper and the structural changes within the bank itself. New week. Welcome to the Joy Business Minute. Hello everyone, Daryl and Karen with the latest news. The Bank of Ghana has admitted serious supervisory lapses that resulted in revoking licenses of five banks. But it has however sure that measures have been instituted to prevent this from happening again. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has outlined a new set of guidelines that would assist banks and non-bank financial institutions against money laundering. The guidelines take effect this month. The FAO is asking government to increase its investments in aquaculture while it cuts down on imports before enforcing closed season for fishing. Government has postponed the closed fishing season intended for this month to next year. And a mortgage specialist, Ben Obeng, is calling for more education on home mortgaging to allow the average Ghanaian purchase a decent and low interest home. He spoke to Joy Business ahead of the Joy News Western World Habitat Fair. The next mini clinic takes place on the 11th and 12th of August at West Hills Mall. Stay glued for updates. Bye! That was the Joy Business Minute, Daryl Kwao, and the one who sang at the end there was Karen Dudu. Yeah. And Enima Enimado is here. She has a few of your messages that you have been sending in so far. Enima? Hi. Um, so this is from Jackson um, in Cape Coast. He says, Daniel, please ask the man who is head of the Bank of Ghana. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he means the um, supervisory why they waited when when the things went bad before they came to take action. Um, following from the book written by William Black titled The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One, clearly what has happened in the banking and especially the non-banking financial institutions, I just want to say these owners or directors should all be prosecuted, even if it takes 10 years to do that. They are unable to repay mature depositors' fund, and you find them driving expensive cars, vacations, and owning a lot of personal properties. They should all be prosecuted, and all ill-acquired property should be disposed to defray out Standing depositors fund. That's from Kofi Ajiman. Good morning. Please, the gentleman in your studio is just merely doing PR. Some officials in central bank have to be penalized. How can you, a regulator, specialize in all stuff as a regulatory body, be deceived by some of these collapsed banks into believing that they had a real capital and allow them to operate? What is their use then? Why are they trying to shield these officials? Heads must definitely roll. That's from Kwesi in Taifa. From what Mr. Jesse is saying, it's either the BOG is not being transparent or has not done a thorough root cause analysis. There's definitely a political hand in the rot at the BOG. That's from Joe. Daniel, I'm surprised that up until now, the media still misallocates blame to the responsible entities. Nobody is talking about the auditors of these banks who signed on and veri verified sorry, the accounts of these banks before they were submitted to the central bank. For misleading the regulators and investors, the auditors must be sued in advanced jurisdictions this would have been the first point of call even before the central bank is investigated for law breakers now from usu says i know someone who has been trying to withdraw his investment from a microfinance company for two years now without success that company has during the period opened a banking hall and is on the bog list of microfinance companies of good standing as at first august 2018 can bog supervisory department help with the retrieval of his money should he come over to lodge a complaint and um, i'll come back with the twitter messages in a few minutes all right thank you very much anymore animado we'll be waiting Waiting for those tweets. Curious question there. Um, so this, this seems like a housekeeping question. Let me 
let me have you address that quickly. This last message, um, this person who is trying to withdraw money, Mr. OCGC, can you help the person or should the person come to the office or is it something that you can... Yeah, I think we have uh, an office in the financial stability. We have an office in the financial stability office, department, sorry, an office in the financial stability department that handles uh, issues of such nature. So I'll encourage the person to go to that department, uh, City House, I think on the seventh floor. Yeah. Okay, so please, now for most, we go to the seventh floor of City House, look for this financial stability department. department of the Bank of Ghana, and the person should make the reports there. All right, so this fit and proper, fit and proper, fit and proper thing we're talking about, um, going forward, which persons will be fit and proper to own a bank? Uh, when we talk about fit and proper, um, it cuts across uh, the uh, entire uh, bank, and um, especially uh, with emphasis on uh, shareholders, uh, uh, directors of the bank, and 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 key management uh, staff. Uh, these are people who uh, constitute the top hierarchy of of, of the institution, and that's is not to say that other um, staff members of a bank are not, uh, should not be fit and proper. Uh, for somebody to be described as uh, being fit and proper, uh, by way of summary, uh, what it means is that the, the person must have integrity. The person must have integrity, and we have a checklist for that. Uh, I don't want to be granular in, in this situation, but uh, if somebody uh, has, for instance, uh, run down a bank or has been involved in uh, serious uh, financial practices in a bank or any other institutions. Uh, what it means is that um, because we would not want to, uh, so to speak, recycle bad behaviors where somebody misbehaves in bank A and goes to bank B, uh, such a person would not be fit and proper because uh, the person will have integrity issues. Uh, and when it comes to Bank of Ghana, I think such a person, if we already he's on the board of a bank, he'll be moved, he'll be asked to leave. And if uh, we get an application that such a person is being put on the board of a bank, what it means is that we're going to uh, decline it. And uh, what we're doing now is to have a register of, of people who have uh, been involved in uh, bank failures and other more practices as far as banks are concerned. And it's, so to speak, a black book, and we'll be monitoring such people. Uh, besides uh, integrity issues, uh, a board member, a managing director, key management staff must have the relevant experience, mm. are you getting it, uh, to be able to run a, a bank. Uh, so we'll look out for the uh, experiences of such people, and even if there's the need for us to interview such persons, Interviews will be conducted uh, before such persons approval. Uh, approvals by the be, bank itself. Yeah, the mm -hmm. bank will do its mm -hmm. own uh, interviews, and we can also, as a central bank, uh, we can ask for interview. Okay, yeah, that's for, what I'm asking for. Yeah, by the central bank yeah, itself. Yeah, the regulator. Mm -hmm. We can call for interviews that want to interview the person before we give, we, we, we give uh, a, 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 a approval. Uh, then we also, besides experience, we also look at um, uh, sorry qualification. Qualification is also key. We want to okay. ensure that people uh, appreciate uh, conceptual framework in the areas in which uh, they are being deployed. They have the relevant uh, accreditation uh, by way of qualification before approval is given to such persons. But in all these matters, what it means is that the bank itself, the bank itself must have a way of checking all these things. They themselves must have a checklist for integrity. Okay. They must have a checklist for experience. They must have a you checklist mean the for qualification. For the yes. So mm. what it means is that the bank itself must do its homework well before it comes to the central bank. Okay. Then we will also take it up there. And going forward, we are going to enforce the fit and proper uh, guidance that we have. We have. We have issued to ensure that yeah. people, that people who run uh, banks can be trusted because they are handling depositors' funds. Yeah, let me go to the first points that you raised. You stated categorically that if someone has run a bank down or has been involved in running a bank down, that means that person cannot own 
a, a bank again. Um, would that apply? Should we assume that this will apply to these persons involved in these any of these seven banks? Uh, c- c- certainly. Uh, uh, you see, certainly, uh, that's the way we intend going. That's the way we intend going. And uh, we, on our own, like I said, have a way of uh, determining this. But you also agree with me that it has, uh, it has, it has to be uh, sometimes uh, proven by a court of competent jurisdiction. I, well, I'm not saying that we we'll have to wait for uh, a court to rule on that person before we enforce the fit, before we enforce the fit and proper. That's what I'm saying. We have the rules. The checklists are there. So as and when the applications come in, we're going to use the checklist. As, as, as a benchmark to evaluate such a person and if we have to decline the application, we just go ahead and decline while the mm. court also does its work. But with these persons in particular, considering the role some of them played in the current states that their banks are in, would, would the bank be considering not allowing them to set up another financial institution? Yeah, when the applications come, we'll determine. We'll use the guidelines. It is early days, yes. But what I'm saying is that we have the report, we have the findings, and as and when we receive uh, applications, as and when we receive applications, we use the checklist as a benchmark to evaluate, and a determination will be made. Okay. Okay. Uh, Some of these uh, shareholders are involved in other financial institutions, like... um but not not banks. Do you think that the same standard should be applied to them when they are running these other um, institutions? Like some of them run pensions, some of them, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you see, uh, if you look at Act 90, uh, 930, the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institution Act, uh, Act 90, 2016, uh, it's for the contents are applicable to both banks and savings and loans and uh, all those ones. Those that are regulated by Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Yes. So the rules that we have made uh, apply to these institutions. Uh, For some of them, we use the concept of proportionality uh, to exclude some of them, for instance, the corporate governance. Uh, What's the concept of proportionality? How is that? uh, What it means is that uh, if you take an institution like uh, microfinance, the kind of structures that you expect a bank to have, are you getting it? You shouldn't expect the same structure by way of uh, governance in the microfinance because uh, it would be too much for the microfinance organization and it could be very expensive looking at the size and complexity. Yeah. Are you getting it? So as far as we are concerned, if you take the corporate governance, for instance, it is applicable to uh, the banks and the savings and loans uh, finance houses okay. and all those things. Okay. But we're talking about pensions and all those things. These are institutions that are regulated by SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. Commission. I get it. Mm. And for that matter, you cannot go there and say that you are enforcing okay. the contents of the corporate governance document on these organizations because we do not recommend, we do not supervise them. Okay. But by way of good practice, those organizations, even though we do not supervise them, they could adopt the content of the of the of the document. But it's up to them. It is up to them. Yeah, it is not mandatory because they they are not regulated by uh, the central bank. Would it be your recommendation that maybe they look at they should adopt? I I, I believe these that I believe that looking at the direction we are going and we have this we call the regulators forum where we compare notes, we meet together to discuss topical issues and and, and uh, other issues. So at such a level, uh, some of these issues could be discussed and, and recommendations made to other regulators uh, for them to look at the possibility of adopting some of these things. But looking at what is going on, I'm sure that they also fall in line. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, Tiani. Yeah, I mean... We need to be very proactive in regulation. And from the financial crisis 2007-2009, we have come to realize, we have come to realize that there is a need for us to have, maybe adopt a new set of regulation. A new set of regulation like the Twin Peak approach, where regulation is done by one institution, market conduct is done by one institution. You possibly won't have this type of forums. Unfortunately, like he said, if somebody runs pension, 
Bank of Ghana cannot go and call through them. If somebody is in insurance, Bank of Ghana cannot go there. So a time is coming, way forward. Ghana should sit quietly and reflect. South Africa has adopted it. Uganda and Kenya is about to do the migrating from the Twin Peak approach regulation. In the Twin Peak approach, approach licensing is done by one body. So if it's insurance, it's there. If it's bank, it's there. So that it's, it synchronizes. It synchronizes all these regulations so that each one will talk to one another. If one is not talking to one another, there is something that is wrong. Especially, as I said, they need to have a strong forum for co coordination, meetings. It could be monthly. It could be quarterly. All the regulators meet. Because, you see, our experience have shown recently, recently, and I'm telling you very recent, when Bank of Ghana annulled under Section 55, of the bank, bank and supervision, uh, the bank and specialized deposit act. I was very surprised. I was very surprised for somebody to say that we 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 didn't know. You need, according to the law, for the forty forty nine fifty two, and then encumbered uh, encumbered by fifty five. He said all listing should have prior approval first from Bank of Ghana if okay. it's banking. So I was very surprised the stock exchange people were saying that, look, if you don't get a prior approval, there's no way you mm. can list a bank. Mm. And I was surprised that one regulator was trying to say no. Do you think that there isn't enough coordination? No, there's no interaction. They're not talking to each other. When I say not talking, there are no forums for them to even look at issues. Because if they were talking to each other, this thing would not have happened. The annulment mm. by Bank of Ghana would not have happened. Because in the law, let me repeat, Section 49, Section 52, encumbered by Section 55, says that listing of bank should have prior approval okay. from Bank of Ghana. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me make this comment. I think um, I appreciate where Dr. Tuahene is coming from. Uh, if you look at the, the directive or the guidance that we have issued on bank holding companies, we appreciate the fact that if you have um, financial institutions that are sister companies, for instance, you have a bank uh, that is related to insurance and they, they have another insurance Pension. company, pensions and other uh, financial uh, institutions yeah. are in a group. Uh, looking at the risk uh, profile and the risk dimensions will not be the same as looking at just the bank on a uh, on a silo basis. Okay. So that is the essence of uh, the bank holding companies uh, directive that we have issued or the guidance that we have issued. Okay. So that um, when we are supervising a bank, we'll look at the risk matrix across the whole spectrum right. of, of businesses, insurance, uh, banking, pension, and all, all, all those. Because uh, they all belong to one holding company. And there are transactions that could flow across all, the, of, these, all the entities, all of these and it has serious implications. Mm. It could have serious implications mm. for risk. So going forward, that is the direction we're going to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, if I'm to understand what you have said earlier concerning my question about some of these shareholders owning other financial institutions, as long as they are under your remit, you would uh, apply. Uh, I think it's section seven two four. Okay. It's sec seven two I four of the of the Acts 930 mm. that if they've been involved in an institution that has been insolvent mm. uh, that is something they are going to take into consideration not to um, allow them to run another institution that is what the law is saying and okay. and, and so long yeah, as I just yeah, wanted that yeah, that's what the law is saying and uh, we have no choice than to uh, like we said enforcement everybody is talking about enforcement and we wouldn't want a situation where 10 years down <laughs> the lane people will come back and say that the law said this or the law this is what this is the provision of the law and you did not enforce so once we have all agreed that this is the direction we want to go all stakeholders must all stakeholders must come on board mm. for us to go move in that direction and just it involves enforcing the laws the regulations and the rules and everybody will be happy that's it looking forward at some of the things that we need to do do you think that as an institution as a as a division of the bank your division um, you are you have enough resources, you have enough numbers to police all of these banks in the country? Let, 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 let me say that uh, 
the management of the bank has been very supportive. Uh, and the, we have a lot of reforms that are uh, going ongoing currently. Uh, and uh, it involves uh, capacity building. Um, uh, people are being trained uh, to be able to uh, work and work effectively. Uh, and uh, we are being provided with uh, 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 logistics by way of technology uh, so that we'll be able to uh, do our on-site and off-site uh, activities uh, very well. Uh, the resources of the department uh, are being beefed up and uh, more hands are being brought on, on, on board. People with uh, specialized skills are being employed. Mm. Uh, so uh, going forward with the support, looking at the kind of support we've had so far from management, I think the department is being positioned. So say yes, I'll let you go ahead, but let me open the phone line. 0302-216-541. 0302216541 Okay. Um you you uh, r wrap up on this one. I just have a I just have a question about um if you think that your d division or department should be separated from the central bank like it's done in the UK. Uh this issue has come has come up several times. Um yeah, the UK at a point in time uh, uh, did exactly what you are saying okay. uh, by separating the super uh, the bank supervision department from the central bank, uh, but it has come back because it's realized that uh, it it wasn't the best approach. Are you getting it? Uh, to 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 take supervision out of the central mm. bank. Are you getting it? Mm. Uh, so the status quo will remain. Yeah, going forward, uh, for those of us in the central bank. Uh, looking at the direction that supervision is going now, uh, we think the banking supervision department should should, should uh, continue to be in the central bank. Other okay. uh, central banks uh, uh, took that decision that mm. you just described, and they they they, they and they've, they've come back. They've come back. Yeah. My so. final question. My final question to you, and this this I promise, this is my final question. My final question to you would be, um, when we spoke to the deputy governor on Thursday. Um, Ms. Awaji told us that some of the banks basically presented false documents. They they misrepresented their position. Daniel, I thought we have we had this. No, it's a, it's this, a question about going thoroughly. I, thought, I know, thought, I know, I know. Give just 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 hear me out. Yeah. <laughs> so say yes, you just hear me out. But my, my my question is that going forward, what are we? Um, what are we doing to make sure that if I'm a bank and I present documents that are fake or that are false, you can detect that. This is what you. This is what I'm doing. I I just talked about. Um, I I talked about uh, the kind of the, the kind of training that we are getting. Uh, are you getting? And it's one of the measures okay. that have been put in place. But you see, at this level, I wouldn't want to be granular to take you through the procedures, verify this, do this, call for this statement, and do this, go there, call for suite. I think I will be granular, mm -hmm. and I have told you that we have looked at our processes and procedures. Are you getting it? And whatever uh, capital verification reports uh, that come out, what we have d done is to put in place a quality control okay. procedures. Are okay. you getting it? To ensure that the work has been done thoroughly and properly reviewed okay, before I'm, it is approved. I'm going to cut you at this point this, before you finish. Yeah. I'll take the last minute out of your, your submission and give the question to Dr. Etiahin. He just okay, mentioned right. he has a question. Thank you very you. much. No, no, he has a okay. question for you. Thank you very much so, for coming. I'm sorry to take your time. I have read through the corporate governance directives. There's one area I want you to take a critical look. Critical look. The session 50, 87. The 87. It says that a Bank of Ghana staff or executive shall be not be eligible for appointment as director for regulated financial institution for a period of two years. I say, professionally and internationally. Doc, please lean for it for me. Yeah. Internationally and professionally, two years to me is 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 a too short a time. Go and check on the Federal Reserve. It takes between five to seven years before you come and regulate. The reason being is that if Ose is the governor and you retire and you come to me and a small boy and you need a license, what, how would I feel about you? I'll come under duress. I'll come under undue influence. So I believe, and I have a case for you, one of the banks, the two of the banks, 
were chaired by former high respected Bank of Ghana officials. What would you say? They are used to as cover up. So I believe the governor should revisit your cooling off period for Bank of Ghana staff. Because that is the only way people will not use their position and influences mm. to come and trouble you people mm. there. And now, if you like, I would like to mention the two institutions. Um, okay, so I think it's I think it's common knowledge. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, it's it's good you brought it up. <laughs> that is why most of the time, what we do is before we finalize the before we finalize the search guidances and guidelines, we put them in the public domain okay. for people to comment so I can comment. and comment and read so he issues. can comment and make I, his I can comment. so, so he, he, yeah he, 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 he or, he should, or you yeah. take this as a no, he should bring and it. he should bring it to the attention of the central okay. bank okay. yes yeah, so okay thank I, you I very much take a look at it okay, okay. thank you very so, much mr sage see you have been so so gracious to us this morning um he's a very busy man head of banking supervision division at the bank of ghana dr rich monetia is here let me go on to the phone lines and um, my callers have had quite a Yes, Mr. Jesse, Mr. Sages is just exiting the studio now. Um, my colleagues have had quite a fight with me this morning. I have not put anyone through. But Kofi from Accra is on the line. Kofi, very, very sorry. I've kept you on the line, I understand, for so long. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I think that sometimes you have to let us talk to these people. Because we also have a view to express. It's difficult to get them to the studio to talk. And last Saturday... One of them was uh, the deputy governor was the, on, on your station, even running away from questions from Samson. How, why should it be so? So please give us opportunity for us to ask questions because some of these things do not make any sense. Now, I happened to take a loan from a bank. The bank chased me for the loan and even was threatening to come for my collateral. How come that some people will take loans? You tell us you can't locate them. You tell us these loans are bad loans and the loans were given to themselves. So for me, it doesn't make any sense at all to use the taxpayers' money to fund this bank. So my question is very, very simple. How come that a banking supervision division will be there? Fine. It doesn't matter who was there. It doesn't really matter. Because it's all, you have to have every institution has policies that you must follow. Once you are not following the policies, whoever that is there must be held accountable. So the auditors, as um, how do you call it, one of your panelists said, must be brought to book. These people are known people. Is it because they are, uh, how do you call it, um, influential by, by virtue of their, their thievery, their stealing from us? Somebody steals 50 Ghana cities, the person is jailed. And these people are stealing millions upon billions of, the, uh, of cities. They, 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 they put up banks. And somebody said that the easiest way to be an, a very good robber is to set up a bank. The easiest way to rob a bank okay, is to set up you. a bank uh, 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 with false uh, uh, pretenses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kofi. Calling from a crowd. Well, it's the Banking Supervision Department, not a division. 0244-340-437-0302-216541. Dr. Etiahene, I'm sure there's so much for you to say. I would mm -hmm. ask that you please um, summarize your thoughts for us in your final words. Thank you very much. I believe way forward, as I've always been saying, the rules and the regulation must be enforced to the letter. And we should not look at personalities. We should not look at status. And we should not also look at those who have caused these uh, problems. Okay. And we must take a spade, a call a spade, a space. And if there is need for us, those who are found culpable, as I've always been saying, let them face the law. If the law is narrated them, so be it. But if they are found guilty, they must be punished because it's been done in Nigeria, as I've already told you. Yeah. So we should not take things for, for granted because it's becoming something unbecoming in this country. Mm. Don't let us not politicize what is going on. Let us all show concern because should the banking sector collapse, I believe even your small salary here, you can't take. Hmm. Uh, because we need to make sure. And again, let the governor, all the directives is come, as I've said, let him please enforce them religiously. And those who are fine to be going, not complying, let them face the law. Okay. And if we do that, I hope the next 10 years, we will not be experiencing this financial crisis. Because when I call it financial crisis in 
in June in Kimpiski when I was giving. They said it's no crisis. <laughs> but any now we all agree. Yes, any okay. bailout more than five percent is a crisis, according okay. to Levin and Kunt, according to Levin and Valencia. Okay. Anything above five percent. It's a crisis. A crisis. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Richmond. It's here, Henry. We hope that next time we're having a conversation, it's under much better circumstances. Have a great day. It's 29 minutes past nine. Let's go on the phone lines once again and listen to Asari from Kumase. Good morning, Asari. Good morning, Asari. Okay, so Abina is the one I have on the line. Good morning, Abina. Good morning, Daniel. How are you this morning? Very well, thanks. And yourself? By God's grace, I'm bigger, better, and greater. Let's hear you. Please, I just want you to ask the head of banking supervision what they are doing about ASM financial services. Because some of us also have money there. We can't access our money. And it's been three years now. Right. Um, thank you, Abna, for your yes. question. Let me take another caller. Is this a side from... Okay, so I don't have... Any other callers? You can call on 0302 Uh The thing is, I cannot take any more phone calls. My friends from GT Bank are here. We'll be having a nice conversation very shortly. But you want to stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. At Afrodent.